Welcome on everybody, welcome back. You don't know his boy Kamani Brown. And today we're going to be speaking about the iPhone 15 Pro Max and this new fancy dancy USB-C port. Now, speaking in particular, a definitive question. Yes, it is a worthy upgrade. That one upgrade alone opens up a whole new world for content creators and for people who just want to manipulate their multimedia. Now, a question which isn't so popularly answered as yet at this time is whether or not this thing can work with SD cards. I already know that they can work with SSDs as we all know Apple told us right out the gate but the question is SD cards and which one do you need to buy to get it to work. Now short answer yes and in this video I'll actually answer two questions. You can actually work with this a USB-C hub. This is my go-to, my favorite one from Anchor, and let's just get straight into it. So just plugging it right into the device, pause it instantly. As you can see the light, the power light here on the hub itself, it actually reads it here as a USB device that has been plugged in, right here in the dynamic island. And I'm going to start with this. This is the fastest SD card that I actually own, the SanDisk Extreme 150 megabytes per second SD card, right? So let's just stick it right here in the main slot. Go into files, and as you can see, here it is, SanDisk, right there. Working live in living color from a USB-C hub. So, the main thing you want to know is if you can film with it. For all you filmmakers out there and content creators, yes you can. In particular, if you want to film in ProRes, which is the professional camera mode, it's currently in HD format, the highest is 4K 60 right there. However, there's a few caveats to know. As per Apple, the minimum speed requirement for any storage device that you use to film at the maximum 4K 60 resolution in ProRes is actually 220 megabytes per second. This is clearly significantly below that speed. Currently, this is a 128 gig SD card. So it only shows me having around about seven minutes of record time. I like that it actually shows you that. It also shows you that it is recording directly to a USB-C device. Nice touch. So here I am recording. Recording, recording, recording. Apologies for the glare people. And bam. So now that's done. Let's go back to the files app. Here it is, the SanDisk. And when you record, it actually creates a subfolder called DSIM and 100 Apple. So you go into there, here's a video file, and it's played. So here I am, recording. Recording, recording, recording. Apologies for the clear people. And, um, right? Now I don't know how many of you guys noticed that, but that was very choppy. The frame rate was pretty bad. And that's the thing. The speed of the SD card matters. The minimum, as I said, is 220 megabytes per second. And it's not just for SD cards, but any USB-C storage device that you have plugged in, whether it's an older SSD or a flash drive, whatever, that's the minimum speed requirement. If you want to film in a maximum 4K 60 in ProRes mode, everything else works perfectly fine. Filming up to 4K 30, works perfectly fine. HD 60 works perfectly fine. And note, I said for ProRes. So that's it, it works. All right, people, bonus round. Now what we have here actually just came in the mail. This is actually what was used for the thumbnail, a Lexar dual slot SD card reader. It has both USB-C and USB-A connection. So very versatile. Very affordable, only costs like seven bucks. I'll leave that in the description below. But this is what I would highly recommend if you plan on recording straight to SD cards or backing up your data. Very, very portable, very small, very convenient. And what I love about it, it gives you USB 3.2 Gen 1 speeds, which is pretty much five megabits per second. Not the fastest speeds, but definitely more than fast enough to get the job done right up to you guessed it recording in prores 4k 60 right no need for that anymore 
So let's just show you guys how this thing works quickly. Back to the sand disc. Let's just drop this right here in the slot here. Bam, simple as that. And I'll even plug in the micro SD card as well for good measure. I don't know why these things always plug in upside down, but whatever, that's how it goes. Now let's just take this off because you don't know. Straight USB-C to the iPhone. Let's get that in there. There you go. Easy, nice, simple, sleek setup. And it's really firm in there. Let's go in straight into the phone. Let's check the files. App. Here it is, SanDisk and Lexar. So it's reading both of them at the same time. And I didn't show you guys how this thing works with HD 16 ProRes. So just to confirm, let's go into video here for a second. Just to confirm, ProRes SDR, leaving it in HD 60, and you'll see how this thing gives you pixel perfect recording. So let's just go. Let's just do a quick five second recording here. Bam, bam, bam. Space may be a little bit messy, but yeah, this is it. Stop that. Now it is saved directly to the dominant SD card, which is the one with more storage, the 128 gig SanDisk. Let's go right into the Files app. I already have it selected, so DSIM, 100 Apple, and here it is. And it's in HD60, so let's just show you guys how pixel perfect this thing is. Let's just do a quick five second recording here. Bam, bam, bam. Space may be a little bit messy, but yeah, this is it. So yeah, perfect. Yet again, this is what I would highly recommend if you plan to film directly to SD cards. Very small, very pocketable, very portable, very sleek, and gives you a two for one, people. So you have options. So that's it. Let's carry on the show. Now to show you the other option, this is a more expensive SD card. This is more the budget option. This is just a simple Lexar A1, 100 megabytes per second SD card. Now this just being a 64 gigabyte SD card, this costs like six bucks, so very cheap. But just to show you guys, you can't exactly cheap out on this. So yet again, this will work up to about HD 60 or 4K 30, absolute max. If you go to 4K 60, just to show you guys how the speed really and truly affects this, Let's get that in there. Let's go back to the camera. Let's go back to video. ProRes SDR. Of course, you can film in ProRes Log where you have more information to work with in post to edit colors and whatever. Let's change this to 4K 60. And yet again, people, it will work. It's showing the max time being about four minutes with it being just 64 gigs. And here we go. Recording, recording everything. Bam, bam, bam. All right, stop that. Let's get out of here and head to the Files app. Here's Lexar. Get into that. DSIM, 100 Apple. And here's the video file. We press that. Let's play that. All right, you saw that for yourselves, right? It took forever to start after I pressed play, and for some ungodly reason, it runs from, it only caught like one second, and then it got extremely choppy. Look at this. It gets extremely choppy right out of the gate. So this is useless footage. So that's just something to note. Yes, SD cards do work. However, speed is king. So you have to invest in a SD card or micro SD that actually has a speed of at least 220 or 250 megabytes per second. Those are very expensive, significantly more expensive than solid state drives, depending on what size you're looking for. But a budget SSD will do just fine because the USB-C port actually will not go beyond 10 gigabits per second, which funny enough is actually the fastest USB-C port on commercially sold smartphones at this time. Because even Samsung, even though they have it, theirs is limited to about five gigabits per second. So good job, Apple. At least I did something right. So thanks for tuning in, people. I will be showing you guys the limits of which you guys can use the SSD 
in the following video so stay tuned for that one you know i'll appreciate a like subscribe and of course hitting that little notification bell so i'll see you guys in the next one peace out and take care